Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year's entitled question of the day. What is the criteria saying Shemar Pachas during the week of the Shiva Yemei Mishteh? The fact is the Gemara does openly say that during the week of Shemar Brachot, we do recite Shemar Brachot with one condition, that there are Panim Chadashot. The question is, what are Panim Chadashot? So there's actually four variables involved that uh, seem to be Machlok between the Rambam and Tosfot and the Rosh. The Rambam mentions that we are Mavarech the Sheva Brochot, Vishvilam, for the, the Panim Chadashot, which talks about the Rosh do not mention that. Number two, the Rambam mentions that if the person heard the Sheva Brochot at the Chupah, even if he did not stay for the meal, then he is not considered Panim Chadashot. While, according to Tosfat and Rosh, if the person was at the Chupa heard the Sheva Brochot, but was not there at the meal, and then he first comes to the Sheva Brochot during the week, that would be Panim Chadashot. The third point of contention is regarding Shabbat. The Raman does not mention a word about Shabbat, but Shabbat is considered Panim Chadashot, while Tosfat and Rosh says Panim is, Shabbat is considered Panim Chadashot. And finally, Raman does not mention anything about the type of person has to be someone who brings simcha for the chatam and kala, that they would go ahead and marbe bishvilam, that the chatam and kala would make more at the meal for this chosh of a guest. Rambam does not mention that, while Tosfot and the Rosh do. So there's four differences in the Rambam and the Tosfot and the Rosh. The Yachosh says that, what's the svar behind all of this? And he writes that according to the Rambam, the bracha is recited by this person who sees the chatam and kala, and when he sees this event, there's a special bracha that he has to give. Directed to the Chatan and Kala, that they should have bracha, that's lachan simcha. This shevach, no, this shevach, this bracha must be given by an eyewitness to the event. So if he already heard the bracha the first time, or uh, if it's Shabbat, that doesn't make a difference. It's only one thing. Did he hear the bracha or not? And if he did, and he's not Panim Chadashot, and that's why he explains the Rambam, the language, Mevrach Bishvilam. The Brach is for the Panim Chadashot. He does not mention anything about Shabbat, because how does that help? And he doesn't mention anything about what kind of person he is. It's not a factor. While well, according to Tosfot and the Rosh, the whole factor is the Simcha, the extra additional Simcha that the Chatan and Kala have by the Panim Chadashot joining. And with this new level of Simcha, then it's time again to recite the Shevach to Hashem of the newfound Simcha. If that's the case, Shabbat would help because that adds a new Simcha. Yontif helps, that makes a new Simcha. The person himself has to be someone who brings the Simcha that the person at the Chatam HaKala would want to be Mar Bishvilam. And the fact that they were at the Chupah, if they didn't stay for the Simcha at the meal, so now when they stay for the meal for the first time, then that of course would work. So it's mamash two different kishot to what the whole purpose is behind Panim Chadashot. Halacha Lamaisa, we certainly do rely Tosas and Rosh and make the bracha on Shabbat. Uh, regarding having a person who's not anything special to the Hatan and Kala, for the Ramam that would be fine, but for Tosas and Rosh that just would not work. So really, for the Panim Chadashot, it should be a person. But since we're holding like Tosas and the Rosh on Shabbat, we should hold by them during the week as well, it would seem. And it should be a person who really is so close to Chatam Kala to the point that they would be Mar Bebishvan, they would want to make extra food for them at the Sudah, so that it's a special Sudah just uh, because they came. With Hashem, they should just have a Smachot Shalom.